Hey and welcome back. Today, let's ask the question, why are conspiracy theories so attractive? One person with a really interesting take on conspiracy theories is Dr. Daniel Jolly. I'm Dr. Daniel Jolly. I'm a senior lecturer in psychology based at Northumbria University in Newcastle in the UK. And my expertise is in the psychology of conspiracy theories. In an interview in The Guardian, Dr. Jolly answered these questions. What's the difference between a conspiracy theory and just misinformation? So the real difference with a conspiracy theory is the idea that there's a powerful group plotting something secret for their own gain. So something can just be fake, that there's no hidden motive behind it. And that is a clear difference. It's pointing the finger at a group of people and blaming them for the wrongdoings, blaming them for the virus, for example. Why are conspiracy theories so attractive to us. While conspiracy theories in general have been shown to arise in moments of crisis, when we have the need to feel in control, to feel certain, and in these kind of rapid crises, we feel threatened, we feel unsure what is happening, which is exactly what is happening with COVID-19. Do conspiracy theories actually make us feel more secure about the world? Well, it's a real interesting, real interesting point there. People who have this need to feel in control, the influence on them actually may just be quite temporal. They may seem appealing, but they're not satisfying. Could it shown that people who are exposed to conspiracy theories actually have further mistrust to those around them? It actually increases their feelings of anxiety. Often it's because if you then subscribe to one conspiracy belief, you then start questioning other things which means that it can then ramp up your mistrust and your kind of feel of feeling of uncertainty of you living in your society. So when they emerge in times of crisis, they may temporarily make us feel more secure, but that will not be long lasting. Does YouTube and other social media actually encourage conspiracy theories? There's no hard data that demonstrates that today with the internet, conspiracy theories are more popular. So it may just be us assuming they are. I think it's important, though, to really look into this and to see the power that social media can have. Thinking about the 5G conspiracy, it seemed to emerge from social media, where the algorithms on Facebook picked up chatter with regards to the 5G and brought it into the trending. And then during videos, people in the comments were talking about the masks and how one way to stop COVID is via the masks and pulling them down, etc. So that's something that's potentially quite novel in that that fast inter interaction may have actually sped up the kind of insurgence of the conspiracy. And Dr. Jolly's answer to this question is fascinating. Should we ban conspiracy theories? It's a real interesting problem with regards to Facebook and social media in general and how they deal with conspiracy theories because someone's conspiracy theory is someone's truth in essence. So it's how do we define what a conspiracy theory is? And indeed by banning, for example, conspiracy theories on platforms will just reaffirm the suspicions that people have that they're trying to hide something. So it may actually increase people's conspiracy theorizing because they are being silenced. So it's that, it's that balance of ensuring there's a, pla a space and a platform for people to have free speech, to be able to discuss issues and to you know, question things, which I think is important that we question. But then the balance comes by that things aren't made into the trending pages that are not based on truth. So right now, Facebook and etc. are taking down content that they see to be inciting violence and that can actually be a hinder to curbing COVID-19, which I think is a positive first step, but it's not going to fix the issue as a broad issue in the future. So maybe it's thinking more about the individual as well and ensure the individual has the skill sets to really ask the questions, but also evaluate the evidence. So we know those people who lack critical thinking abilities are more likely to believe in conspiracy theories. And we also know that people who believe in conspiracies, it's because they want to understand the world, but they're struggling to evaluate the evidence. 
So potentially Australia instill those skill sets may mean that they're able to resist the conspiracy narrative. So are there unique characteristics of people that make them more susceptible to believing conspiracy theories? There are a range of different needs that are met by conspiracy theories. But there's also kind of a social element whereby we want to affirm ourselves and also the groups that we belong in. And interestingly, research in America has found that with regards to politics, the conspiracy theories switch depending on who is in power. So it's very much a process is in play here where you're just affirming your, your identity. The others, those are the ones who are conspiring. And that can change depending on the context. I've even heard contradictory conspiracy theories. On one hand, the COVID-19 virus is man-made by a lab in Wuhan. And on the other hand, people who believe that also say it's caused by 5G technology. Have you heard that? A consistent finding in the literature is that if you believe in one conspiracy, you believe in many others. Also, interestingly, research has found that you can believe in mutually exclusive conspiracy theories because it's all based around this worldview that there are conspiracy theories in the world. So that means that someone may believe that the virus is human-made whilst also believing it's caused by 5G. Whilst these two things can't necessarily happen at the same time, it's in this process of you, if you distrust our society, our people who perceive to be in power, you can describe to these ideas. Many people who believe in conspiracy theories see themselves as radical free thinkers, are they? One of the biases is confirmation bias that we're all susceptible to. This is the idea that we only really listen to evidence that supports our prior beliefs. Things that go against it, that discredit our beliefs, we ignore. There's also biases based around personality bias. With COVID-19, it's such a large event worldwide. To explain this as something from animals doesn't really make sense. But to explain this as a conspiracy where it was human-made, the proportionality matches the cause. It all kind of fits together. So we can, in situations where these events arise, be more drawn to conspiracy narratives. We then stay in our echo chambers in our online world. So as scientists, how do we actually debate facts with people who believe in things that aren't true? Interventions are really challenging, but of course, as you say, they're really important. So potentially targeting the general population and targeting those who are hard and conspiracy theorists may be slightly different. So, for example, we know that using counter-arguments, giving people facts, can reduce belief in conspiracy theories. But if you harbour a conspiracy belief and you see some counter-material from the government, you are going to discredit that because of your confirmation bias. So, indeed, for others, it may be having people become trusted messengers, where you're not aggressive, but instead talk to them about their beliefs, get them to really kind of think hard about the evidence that they are, you know, really kind of suggesting is the be and end all. And that maybe that kind of thinking process and get them to reevaluate may start changing their beliefs. Of course, this I am sure would work for the general population as well. Um, So I think with ensuring that the landscape on Twitter and Facebook is full, full of facts is really important but then still acknowledging that those who are the hardened end of the conspiracy theorising may distrust that straight away. So it's definitely a, it's a challenge, but I think it's important to really evaluate. I think Dr Joy's answers were really interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Because of you, the truth is out there.